Good afternoon and welcome to the July 2018 edition of the Marks Group Goldmine Tips and Tricks webinar. We put on these Tips and Tricks webinars once a month. You can visit our Tips and Tricks from ages past by heading on over to www.marksgroup.net. Feels like it's been a while. What are we looking at today? Well, let's see if we can't figure out some bullet points. So the process monitor, the bane of our existence. I'm going to show you how to tame this little beastie, if you would be so kind. We're going to look at commenting contact records. I realized that my bullet point's running off the screen. Um, should have checked that. At any rate, I'm going to show you what I would think to be a better way to comment contact records other than using the, um, the nefarious notes tab. And we'll talk about why we shouldn't use the notes tab as well. And if we have some time, we're going to talk about how to auto schedule follow ups. Uh, Goldmine used to actually be called Goldmine Sales and Marketing. Um, it is really strong in, in the front office end of the house. And a lot of salespeople that I've talked to over the years always like to say that there's never any last action that happens against the contact record. And Goldmine can make it really easy to auto schedule uh, follow ups after you complete a history. I'm going to show you that little stupid pit trick. To coin a phrase so let's go ahead and jump right in hopefully oh look at that what a mess the process monitor what do I what do I mean by the process monitor well anytime you auto retrieve email or do like a, like a global replace any kind of system process like synchronizing with Outlook anything like that is going to bring up what's called the process monitor let me show you what that looks like so in order to force the issue here, I'm just going to do a very quick global replace. And I'm going to replace, let's say, I just want to get something replaced so I can show you what's going on here with the process monitor. Okay, so now you're going to see here, and you've probably seen this before and wanted to, to, to tear your hair out over it, is you get this little process monitor guy here, this little floaty tab. Now, some of you may have also seen the process monitor stuck in the upper left-hand corner as well. Uh, I've never seen this thing work well with the little floaty tab. So what I like to do with my process monitor is actually turn it into a tab. This is so easy, it's criminal, that it's so well hidden. I'm just going to float over my process monitor to bring it up. I'm going to right click anywhere in this top edge and select show as MDI window. This is just some programmers attempt at um, trying to be useful and clever and it is useful and clever but all that really means is make me a tab and I do so like that and now the process monitor is going to be a tab forever until you happen to uh, right click here and release the MDI window state again. So if you have any kind of auto retrieve happening for your email, any Outlook synchronization, you might find uh, this a nice trick to use just to show the, the process monitor is that MDI window. Uh, the floaty tab can really screw up your interface. I've seen environments where the floaty tab will actually um, steal the focus to goldmine uh, if, like, say, email auto retrieve is enabled. Uh, only only seems to happen on some operating systems. I'm not sure what the rhyme or reason is on that. At any rate, make that bad boy into a tab, and you will enjoy life to its fullest. Commenting contact records. I want to just take a moment to talk about contact record comments. Okay, so Goldmine has this seductive notes tab. I even have it turned off. That's just how dangerous this tab is. How do I turn back on tabs that I'm, that I'm not seeing here? If I'm not seeing ta tabs that other people are, how do I get those on? Really easy. I go to Tools, Options, to the Record tab, and over to the Tabs button. And here all I'm going to do is just enable the Notes tab so we can talk about how terrible this is. Oh. Gonna make me log back in. How convenient. Come on, little guy, you can do it. 
he could do it on his own. Okay. The notes tab. And all I'm doing to move the position of that tab is I'm just click dragging it around. I want to just place it over here so I don't get lost. All right, so the notes tab is a very general area to add free form text to the goldmine contact record. And it, it is really easy and it seems to be a good idea when people first start using it. Well, uh, right out of the box, you start using your gold mine, you see, and people would say, well, I want to complete a phone call against this record, so all I have to do here is go to my notes tab, add a note, and say, uh, we talked about the widget 9000 and one. And then we save that note. And hurrah, that note is there forever and ever. And anyone who goes to this record will see that note, and they'll know on the 31st uh, that I spoke to Bob Smith about the widget 9001. Um, this is actually, in reality, a bad idea. And the worst part about it is that you're not going to realize it until you get months or more frequently uh, years down the road and want to do like real reporting. Let me explain. As I add notes to this notes tab... The notes keep pushing down. What did I do? There we go. So as I add every note, the, the most recent note is going to appear at the top. So if you're looking to track any kind of general comments about this record, which is where the notes tab really shines, actually, um, you're losing the effectiveness because maybe the most important comments can be the first one added. Perhaps you have special shipping instructions. Uh, perhaps you have um, driving directions to their secondary warehouse in here. And that entry is going to be all the way at the bottom. And then now your end users are going to have to... Let's get some space in here. Your end users are going to have to know to scroll down your notes tab to kind of get a sense of what's going on. Now, if you've been completing phone calls in here, as opposed to actually properly completing your phone calls here, what's going to happen later on is that you're going to be, it's going to be impossible to report on those phone calls. Uh, we had a client a couple of years ago that had been using the notes tab exclusively to record all their phone call data. And then it came to the point where the, this poor guy wanted just a simple count, and I want to know how many phone calls each of my users are making and recording in Goldmine, and it was problematic to do because th this information is being written to this, this weird notes table on the back end, and there's no reference. There is a date, and there is a username, but that's kind of all you get. Any kind of real analysis out of the notes tab is not impossible, but it's not easy and you'll never really get what you want out of it. For example, when I complete a phone call here under my complete menu, which is the right way to do it, I get a lot of fields to play with here. So my outgoing call can have a reference. And then not only that, my call has a date, a time, a duration, which honestly I've never really seen used too awful much. I personally use it to build my time out of gold mine. Uh, and, and here's a, a quick little tip. If you happen to want to use the duration field, don't think that this requires an hours, minutes, and seconds value. It doesn't. You can put in like 1.5 for one and a half hours, for example, which is how I do it. When I build time, I put in my decimal hour duration here. So if it'll be 45 minutes, which would be 0.75. Just to, as an aside, don't feel obligated to use this really archaic, awful, awful, awful hours, minutes, and seconds um, format. It, it can be whatever you want it to be. You can even put in a word, believe it or not. I digress. When I complete a phone call here in my history, I have all kinds of really effective fields to fill out, like the reference. I have this uh, optional code field. So not only do I know what the call was about, I know that this call was made in a context. Maybe, maybe this was a this was a widget call. And then the result of the call was successful call, for example. 
So what that would allow me to do after my salespeople have spent a couple of years in blood, sweat, and tears actually completing histories and gold mine, now I can run some real analysis on what kind of calls my people have been making. So not only now can I find out, all right, I want to know how many calls Justin has made. Well, not only that, I want to know how many calls he's made about the gizmo, gizmo 9001. I want to know how many prospect calls he's made. For example, that kind of stuff is very easy to produce out of the history table, which is where the stuff goes when you complete properly. When you complete the notes tab, we got none of that. There's no reference. There's no activity code. There's no result code. There's no duration. Um, you lose, with the ease of use of the notes tab, you lose a lot of the effectiveness of Goldmine history. And let's be honest. There's only three things that Goldmine does better than any, anything else storing and searching for contacts, scheduling and managing calendar, and completing history. And actually, you could reverse that. Say history is actually the most important thing that Goldmine does. So what is the notes tab good for anyway? Well, to be frank, we actually end up turning it off for a lot of our clients after they run into issues. Uh, it's just so easy to just click that add note and leave a note and get on with your life i mean it, it's you can type that is it's actually really easy to do completing history is hard and confusing but the notes tab really does shine when you do things like keep very general information about the contact record so if we go to my roadrunner uh record here. The notes tab is a great place to put shipping instructions, driving directions. Um, because Goldmine is really sales and marketing or front office, I've seen a lot of crazy stuff in here. Like salespeople will put in uh, the prospect's kids' names, uh, what college the kids are going to, um, what sports teams the prospect uh, likes, what sports teams does he hate. You know, like hates the Eagles, Oops. But can't stop watching anyway. Well, been there, right? So, and, and now what happens is that if you leave this notes tab uh, to just a very specific use, and, the, and then more than that, you have to decide that specific use, and then you have to really educate your end users. You have to tell your end users, listen. When you want to know about shipping instructions, you go here. You go to the notes tab. So um, leave package by the back door and knock three times. Sounds awfully clandestine if you ask me. And not only that, if we, if we want to make gold mine more spoon Feedy, I guess, would be a terrible term to use. We can actually change the, the name of the notes tab, and I would recommend this as well, because it, it will help reinforce in the end user's mind that this is not really where a quick note should go. This is where the shipping instructions should go. So let's, how, how do we do that? How do we change the name of this tab? Hmm, let's see if I can't remember. We're going to go to Tools, Options, <clears throat> Record. And then onto our tabs. You remember, you remember the, uh, this area, right? So what you want to do is you want to select the name of the tab you'd like to rename, and click the rename button. I'm going to call this shipping. I'm actually curious to know if this will break it, having something so long, if it'll actually make the tab that wide. We will soon see. Oh, yes, my health has been broken forever. Yeah, so you really you don't get that, that much text on the tab, um, but you get the idea. Is that now I can make this 
There we go. I can make this notes tab into a specific usage tab by just changing the name of that tab. Um, and again, I can't stress how, how important uh, it is enough to actually complete your phone calls and appointments in history. And, and again, that is by going to complete and then whatever you want. Um, and there's a, see, history is scary because there's all this crap to decide from. I mean, all I did was go to the complete menu. I just want to complete a phone call, man. What am I doing choosing between other action and event and to do with correspondence? Who uses the word correspondence nowadays? Oh my goodness, is this 1976? This is interesting. All right, so if you want to make it even easier for your end user to easily complete history, and we're going to get to comments in just a moment, I swear to goodness. Um, Add a button to their, their toolbar up here. Did you know that you can, oh, this could become interesting. Did you know that you can add buttons to your toolbar? Oh, am I pausing, or am I, bear with me, guys. I'm trying to get some real estate tweet up here. Okay, so if I want to add a button to the, um, the, the toolbar up here, you're going to click that little guy over here. I don't know if you can see that. And you want to go to Add, Remove Buttons. And in this case, I want to go to Customize. And when I'm here, and again, all I did to get here was I clicked on the little thin down arrow button there by my toolbar. You know what I'm talking about, right? I go to Add, Remove Buttons, over to Customize. And over to commands and now I can go to complete and now I can actually drag incoming or outgoing call right to the toolbar and this will make it really handy for the end user to easily complete stuff into history now if you're still having issue with your end users completing stuff into the notes tab there is what you can do actually is just turn the notes tab off by tools, options, record, tabs, and uncheck the tab in question. And then we're going to have to restart our gold mine yet again. What I'm really trying to show you fine folks is on the summary tab there is this comments field and this is a native or canned field that comes with goldmine and all it is is a little sentence length field. So this could be a nice alternative to use to notes uh, when you want to put just a very general comment on the contact record and actually Let's move that comments field up to the top half of the record. How do we do that? I'm going to right click in here, go to screen design. Ooh, can I do that here? Oh, yeah, yeah. I actually have to add it to the top half. So I want to go into my screen design. I want to right click, select new field. And instead of creating a, like a brand new field, I'm going to use my little drop down menu here to select comments. And then I place that on the record somewhere. Thusly, make sure that's long enough. And I'm going to exit my screen design by right clicking and selecting exit screen design. So now I have this comments field on the top half of the record. So this is a great place, uh, very simple to use. Uh, again, big fan of keeping it simple. So this would be a great place to put um, no service. This guy's had uh, issues paying his bill. So we're going to mark anyone who has issues paying their bill is no service. Or or great customer. So again. Um, any kind of general note 
like driving directions, like shipping and handling instructions, uh, is, is appropriate to go into the notes tab. If you find people abusing it, uh, do yourself a favor, just turn it off. Force them to use history. Otherwise, um, you're going to get no st statistical analysis out of your database. And that's one of the best things about gold mines, being able to um, you know, do some audit reporting on actually what folks are doing. Anyway, I digress. Scheduling automatic follow-up. This, this is a neat little stupid pet trick, and then we're going to be just out of time. So uh, when I go to complete something in Goldmine, there is a checkbox down here at the bottom of the window, which is schedule a follow-up something. This is really awesome. Because when I click this, say I'm making prospect call number two, say I had a great call. Now, when this is checked, all this does is, I mean, it, it's kind of dumb, but it's, it's nice. All this does is that when you hit OK, it's going to throw you into a schedule window. So you don't have to go ahead and click up here and uh, go to schedule a call again. Now we're going to be on prospect number three or prospect call number three. My pick lists are not configured. And of course, we give it a date and a time. Did you know that when you're scheduling gold mine times, you can use like 9A for 9 a.m. Or for you military folks, 14 would be like 2 o'clock. 17 would be... Um, 5 p.m. So just to throw that out there, uh, there is really no last thing that you do against the contact record in gold mines. So uh, really start to leverage that history and those automatic follow-ups. Um, start to record some phone calls in your gold mine. Turn off that notes tab or at least stop abusing it. At any rate, uh, that's all the time we have for today. My name is Justin Hill. I'm always looking for the next batch of gold mine tips and tricks so please uh, reach out to me at justin at marksgroup.net let me know what you love what you hate what you'd like to see what you'd hate to see and again as always thanks for coming and have an excellent day